All right, so here we are. Just another shot of our uh, backyard here in Ivy Mountain. And uh, you see my dog assistant over there chasing things away. There's the water. Water ha always has activity. We've got Phragmites over here. We're just, you know, deep in the muck over here. This is real qualified. This is good muck. Um, so there's all kinds of animal tracks. We're just reminding you to feel free to share your experiences, your stories, anything you want to post. There's look at there's my assistant out there scaring away anything, <laughs> and we're just out here having fun. It's a it's a warm, nice spring day, and we're talking about gifted on location. Okay, we got a lot of peepers, of course, earlier. Um, so gifting, look at this beautiful apple. I've established call taps. I get in call tap response howling. Of course, every time I howl, I don't get anything. I get a lot of responses in call taps. So I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave this apple here. I'm at my fire pit here. Of course, this is the coronavirus special. And again, you know, this is no joke. I'm not trying to make light of this. I hope you're all well. Take care of yourselves. This ain't no joke. Some serious wilderness knowledge and uh, doomsday prepping is, is no joke and I'm not a doomsday person we're, we're in this together let's stick together let's be patient with each other let's be distant you know the cryptids they're very distant so I'm gonna leave this apple here it could be anywhere but um, I'm not gonna actually leave it here then, then what's gonna happen is maybe a squirrel took it maybe a skunk took it maybe a deer or a bear but then there is going to be something like this. Here is a soapstone, right? This is kind of a, they're, they're common, but it's obviously, you know, transparent. This is the kind of thing you're going to get is where I leave this apple is where that's going to be. So I'm going to take this and leave another apple. And then something similar, another one is going to be back there. That's gifting. You gift it, they gift it. You're going to get some if you keep doing this, it's going to become like marbles, um, bottle caps, dolls. They like dolls. That's crazy. There are some dolls back here. We're going to go find them one of these days. Not on this investigation. You don't want to try to walk across this marsh right now. Uh, it's a lot of been raining and melt. There's a lot of peepers. There's a lot of, this is muck city. Anyway, we're going to go demonstrate gifting a little further down. Gifting. I've established a line of communication with Squatch. I'm tapping. They're responding. I'm going to come to a place that's obvious and leave an apple or a fruit or something they can eat. Fish. People out like salmon. A random animal could just take that and that's it. A Squatch, if, if you're communicating them, will oftentimes leave a gift like a shiny rock. It could be anything. Every time I come back, I call tap. I leave an apple or a fruit. If I get a gift back, and I do this, and I can repeat this pattern of behavior, this is what cryptozoologists call gifting. I'm told definitely not to leave this apple out into the woods, or I will will be doing a, a ghost investigation <laughs> instead. And we don't do those. A lot of paranormal groups, I give them kudos, but it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for... Any cryptid. So when we talk about the Squatchometer, uh, that's, that's also lake monsters, river monsters, um... You know, like the small people, not just Bigfoots. That's not what we do. Dogman, of course. Listen, I'm the Connecticut field rep for the North American Dogman Project. I'm proud to be doing that. Kudos to you guys. Honored to be part of that. Let's listen to the peepers for a minute. So this is dense. Back there is nothing. I was back there one time. Uh, I'm told 
the camera person I was talking about, the dolls that I found back there far in the woods. There is no trail or nothing. I just followed this. You see the water? There's another pond back there. There's two ponds. There's a small one up here and a big one back there. And I went back that way and I got about two miles back and I found toys. Uh, boys toys like plastic dump trucks and some dolls. And, and okay, dolls. Those dolls in the woods. Yeah, I'm going to give that like a 7.4 on the Squatchometer because that was just messed up. And, you know, I'm, I'm being asked to investigate that. I don't even know if I can find it again. But back that way, there's dolls in the woods, dolls and toys, children's stuff. It's messed up. Um, anyway, here we are. We get a lot of activity, beavers and peepers. Uh, investigating cryptids is, is about getting outside to these places. Your state forests, your parks, try to avoid people. Listen, hey, we started avoiding people from the beginning of CSIS, so <laughs> this is nothing new to us. We're even avoiding trees. Hey, don't get too close to me, all right? Shout out to my friends, Dean, new to the group. Everybody that's new to the group, um, welcome aboard. You, you could do your own videos and, and, you know, just check with us, edit them, and post them. We're going to do some call taps later tonight when it gets dark. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this up right now. So we are on location in Ivy Mountain, Litchfield, Connecticut, somewhere our backyard uh, social distancing at its best there's our there's our come here I got the assistant my mighty assistant coming here with some news did you find something come here did you find something uh, he didn't find anything what he's communicating to me is uh that he chased something away so not a good, not, not the greatest assistant to have with you, but we're having fun during, <laughs> during a coronavirus special. It's no joke, everybody. Take precautions. Stay safe. We're going to keep you entertained on our various um, social media sites. Oh, oh hey, going to trademark social distancing media sites. See you soon. Investigation number 106 coming up somewhere, probably back here. All right, so I was, you know, I guess it's okay to leave the apple. So we've been out here a while. Of course, it's really nice and wild back here. We're going to leave this apple here. And we're going to leave the gift here. I'm going to put it away a little bit away. There's the gift. That's soapstone. Nice Connecticut snow soapstone. And here we have put rotten apples in our compost. And they haven't touched them. So the, uh, the camera person said, hey. Leave a nice, beautiful, fresh apple, and we'll see if this, if something doesn't say, there's my gift, it's right there, conveniently located for me. Let's make it one Squatch arm's length away. This is a person's arm away, one human. But, there we go. There we go, Governor, who shut down the state. Thank you. Whatever. Maybe not. Thank you. Whatever. Um, we're going to gift this apple and come back tomorrow, see what happens got nothing better to do you might want to try this knucklehead stuff yourself <laughs> scare up some monsters um, that will knock on your door now and then run away that's what's been happening here with Caesar. not call tapping we got knocking on the door all right gifting this beautiful red delicious apple there's the gift we'll see what happens tomorrow Part two, the apple is still here. I'm gonna do two, one, uh, what, what, what I always like to do is one, and then two call taps, I have my favorite ax. So let's do a call tap. Of course, there's a car coming. <clears throat> there's always 
There's always airplanes and cars in Connecticut and the wildlife here just has to deal with it just like I have to, just like Squatch would have to. So I'm going to repeat one and then two call taps. their apple. A lot of nature out there. A lot of sounds. We'll come in the morning and see what happens with our apple and our gift. We came out like we said we would. I wish everyone to be safe camera person do you want everyone to be safe and happy here all right we're good to go here in CSIS and lockdown like everyone is say no joke we're in this together we're squatching on location you know, this Bigfoot thing Bigfoot is almost 100% human um, so is Bigfoot susceptible to viruses? Absolutely. If this is a living thing like we believe, this is not some kind of spiritual entity. Um, yeah, this thing can easily catch a flu. It could easily go into its population like coronavirus. Of course, it would have the benefit of gluten-free foods and like a paleo diet like no one you know knowledge of herbs it would be totally adept in its environment it would know what to eat to remedy itself with social distance by its very nature and here we are um you know it's not a happy time out there um, so squatch or man and, and we're not that different we're more alike than than not and um lake monsters and mothman and all this stuff well yeah that's that's not us uh, we'll get into what's going on there but for squatch right now in the coronavirus special be safe be tolerant be patient we're in this together apple still there gift still there no call responses tonight but damn hey we got peepers jeepers creepers we got them peepers hi everybody we're out here in field investigation 106 the missing episode part two uh, we explained a lot maybe a little too much but we I explained about gifting I never thought I'd see this I didn't think I'd see the apple left it's still here soapstone is still over there and uh, if you look around yesterday was a gorgeous spring day here we are in a gorgeous winter day went from a picture-perfect postcard to a Christmas card so um, that's New England for you the gift is still here just gonna leave it here at this point would just be disrespectful to take it um, talk a, a bit about Squatch uh, so you know some people are like is Squatch 
related? Is, is there a phenomenon um, related to UFOs? You know, personally, um, from, from our point of view, we're dealing with a biological being here. So it's an animal, probably Gigantopithecus, held over. Um, and this interdimensional stuff where people say, excuse me, I'm getting snow in my mouth. It's a snowstorm. This is not just snow. Uh, today is March 23rd, it's uh, 1 30 p.m. and it's definitely uh, below freezing, like uh, 30 degrees. Um, interdimensional, you know, people shoot at the squatch and nothing, it just seems to vanish or there's light flashes. I mean, I'm not going to really say yes or no, it just seems a little unprobable if we're if we're coming from our point of view as a biological being um, I, I just don't need it to investigate this thing leaves footprints it eats it reproduces it migrates it you know it's territorial it's displaying a lot of just regular mammalian behavior uh, I do find it intriguing uh, the thought that they use uh, canals and tunnels and and of course before that would be cave systems to travel I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be at all possible and probably very likely if they knew of caves that we didn't know about and were able to travel from location to location I don't see why not you know it's gonna again like anywhere it's gonna have water it's gonna have a because if it has flowing water then you have a sense of direction and you have food which here in the coronavirus that's a lot of good stuff um, we're looking around there's a lot of tracks but there's just nothing here where we gifted so I'm gonna say goodbye for today uh, out here in the snowstorm um, field investigation number 106 right here in our own backyard getting a taste of the variations of seasons that's for sure Welcome to spring. <laughs> Hi everyone it's from CSIS. Uh, it's Thursday, March 26th, about 6 o'clock. It's about 52 degrees and partly cloudy. Of course, the apple is gone. We have not been gifted. There's the gift over there. We have scat from an animal, probably raccoon. We have tracks. Large, what I'm guessing is deer tracks coming through the marsh. Back to the woodlot over there. You're not seeing me because I'm not wearing camo. And this is the coronavirus special. Again, I'm not making light of this. This is serious. Uh, we got a crap load of peepers going on back here. The reason we came back here, I knew the apple would be I mean, obviously, if you leave an apple in the woods, it's going to disappear. I see absolutely no trace of Bigfoot. This, to me, is just wild animals. Which, of course, you leave an apple out in the woods, and you're going to have wild animals. Um, but we just got a lot of animal activity back here in general. Now that I look, I can see some tracks. Um, from what appears to be deer, maybe. I'm gonna go with deer. I'll check it out another time. But you know, it's squatchy back here. It's cool, and I hope you're all doing well. That's about it for us demonstrating gifting. Uh, don't waste your apples right now with that. Save your food. Um, we're not gonna do this again right now. We'll wait till the apples are actually on the trees and do it then. Okay? Anyway, be well. Be safe. We love you out there. Bye, everybody, and we'll see you next time when we're going to check out Robin Swamp. Huh? The infamous Robin Swamp. The largest inland swamp in Connecticut. I have been there myself. I talked to a DEP guy. Yeah, it's definitely one of the squatchiest places in Connecticut. And we're going to go deep in on the railroad tracks there's no paths there's no bathrooms or nothing like that you got to walk on the train tracks because otherwise you know it's wetlands on kind of like what you're hearing back here
So um, we're on location, and we'll see you next time from Robin Swamp. And this is part three of Field Investigation 104. Have a nice night, everybody.